Hello everyone, welcome back. In this particular video, we're going to look at a reaction of carboxylic acids. Specifically, this is the reduction of a carboxylic acid into the primary alcohol. And the reagent that's used for reducing the carboxylic acid into the primary alcohol is lithium aluminum hydride. Now, lithium aluminum hydride, recollect, is a strong reducing agent. It is a source of hydride ions. So, in presence of excess lithium aluminum hydride, a carboxylic acid is converted into the corresponding alcohol. Now, what's happening here is that your carboxylic acid carbon or the acyl carbon becomes the alpha hydrogen, alpha carbon in your alcohol. It becomes the alpha carbon in the alcohol. So in terms of a structural difference, all that's happening is you're removing this double bonded O and adding two hydrogens there, which are not shown in the bond line structure. So as an example, I've put down the reduction of benzoic acid here. So benzoic acid here with excess lithium aluminum hydride followed by an acidic workup will convert into benzyl alcohol. That's the primary, al primary alcohol corresponding to benzoic acid. And again, notice how the carbon that belonged to the carboxylic acid is now the alpha carbon in the alcohol, the primary alcohol product. We'll look at the mechanism of this reaction next. Now, this reaction, this mechanism uh, to start off is going to look a little weird. And in fact, if you think about it, our reactant is a carboxylic acid which has this acidic hydrogen in its structure. So when the carboxylic acid reacts with aluminum hydride, I'm going to draw the aluminum hydride part of the molecule. Okay. I'm, I'm skipping the lithium here, but when it reacts with the aluminum hydride part of the molecule, the first step that's going to happen here this hydride is a strong nucleophile. It can also behave as a strong base. So essentially the first step here is going to be an acid-base reaction. One of the hydrides is going to deprotonate the carboxylic acid. Electrons go to that oxygen here. This would be an acid-base reaction which is going to be favored in the forward direction because you have hydrogen gas, okay? H2 gas is going to be formed as a byproduct. So you get the carboxylate, sorry, you can put the negative charge at the top here. Doesn't matter where you put it. You get the carboxylate plus you've got H2, H minus picks up H to give us H2 gas, which just leaves. Okay, that gas is going to escape. And plus, you're going to have uh, aluminum H3. Okay, so that's the aluminum hydride minus the hydride. We get ALH3. So that's the first step of the mechanism. After this first step, what happens next is that, well, there are different proposals here, one of the possible mechanisms or one possibility is that the aluminum hydride reacts with the carboxylate now, okay? Next, so I'm going to draw this again. We have the carboxylate and plus there's the aluminum hydride. So the ALH, one of the hydrides in the aluminum attacks the carbon here, the acyl carbon. It attacks the acyl carbon. Simultaneously, the double bond here opens up and attacks the aluminum, okay? So when this happens, we will get a species where we have the R, have the oxygen with the negative charge here. We've added a hydrogen to that carbon now. The hydride attacked that carbon. 
and we have the other oxygen, which is now connected to that aluminum. So we get ALH2. That oxygen has two lone pairs on it still. So as the pi bond opens up, it would have become a negative charge on the oxygen, but it goes with the aluminum. So you get to an intermediate like this, which then results in an elimination. So this negative charge comes down. And as it does that, the bond between the oxygen and the carbon breaks. Okay, so this would then give us R C double bond O H plus O L A L H two with a negative charge. Now, if you look at it, what we made is the aldehyde. Okay, that's an aldehyde. So the carboxylic acid has been converted into an aldehyde. Now. I don't want anybody to be confused here. The oxygen that I have drawn with the double bond is actually this oxygen, which came down here to make that double bond with the carbon. So that's the aldehyde. And from here, we know that, you know, lithium aluminum hydride can reduce aldehyde. So under these conditions where we have an excess of the lithium aluminum hydride, more aluminum hydride, okay, another molecule of the aluminum hydride can go and attack the aldehyde, the carbonyl carbon, and the double bond opens up over there, which is going to give us R C O minus with two hydrogens. And along with this, we will have the aluminum with three hydrogens on it. So the same aluminum, uh, the, the, the alum species we had here, okay? Uh, the alum species. And notice what we made here is an alkoxide. So that's the conjugate base of the alcohol. So all of this is happening in the first step. And now the second step happens where this oxygen can get protonated with the acid. So this is the second step in the mechanism. And it would give us the primary alcohol product along with water molecule. The hydronium ion is converted into water. So that's the mechanism of the reduction of a carboxylic acid, where the carboxylic acid is first converted into the carboxylate. Okay, so this is the carboxylate, which is the conjugate base of the carboxylic acid. And then the carboxylate is converted into an aldehyde, which subsequently is converted into the primary alcohol. So carboxylic acids can be reduced to primary alcohols using lithium aluminum hydride, an excess of the lithium aluminum hydride reagent. Now carboxylic acids can also be converted into alcohols or reduced into alcohols by using borane as a reducing agent. So if a carboxylic acid is reacted with borane THF, then it will be converted into the corresponding primary alcohol. And the reaction overall is the same. You remove that carbon oxygen double bond and you add two hydrogens over there. Now, one advantage to using borane THF as a reducing agent is that it is selective for carboxylic acids, okay? And it does not reduce 
carbonyl groups. So if you're working with a molecule where there are multiple functional group, groups, and let's say you have a carboxylic acid and you also have a carbonyl group in your molecule, then a borane THF is a better reducing agent or is a more suitable reducing agent because you can reduce the carboxylic acid in presence of your carbonyl group. Now, let me show that using an example. Okay, so let's assume that we have a molecule where we have a car carbonyl group in our molecule, and there's also a carboxylic acid group. So both functional groups are present. Okay, if we reduce this molecule using lithium aluminum hydride, which was the first method or the first reagent that we saw. So if we use an excess of lithium aluminum hydride followed by an acidic workup, realize that lithium aluminum hydride can reduce both a ketone to the alcohol and the carboxylic acid to the alcohol. So the product that we're going to get, and I'm going to number this compound to make it helpful, has five carbons to start off with. So the product that we're going to get would be a secondary alcohol where the ketone was, okay? So one, two, three, four, five. And the carbon, which was the carboxylic acid, is going to become an alcohol. So our product would be a diol. It has a secondary alcohol and a primary alcohol in it. Okay, because we were starting with a ketone product, ketone starting material here. Let's say if we do the same reaction using borane THF as the reducing agent, then our carbonyl group is going to be retained and only the carboxylic acid group would be reduced, okay? So that's the advantage to using borane here, THF. It does not reduce carbonyl groups. So we can retain the carbonyl group while reducing the carboxylic acid to the corresponding alcohol. So that was the reduction of car carboxylic acids to the corresponding primary alcohols using lithium aluminum hydride and borane THF. I hope all of you find the video useful. Bye.